So here we are zooming on uh, the 19th of June. We are zooming. Brief few minutes. And uh, what we uh, were discussing, what we started to discuss was the difficulty of, of getting a board to understand its role as a governor. Uh, not as a checker of the CEO's work or um, micromanaging something that's going on, but actually understanding what its role is, I guess, as a board and uh, the individual roles that exist as well. And, uh, of course, as with any solution, there needs to be a recognition there is a problem. <laughs> and if, if they are all strongly in denial the place I've been many times in my life, then uh, maybe we should uh, find another way of, that is perhaps less threatening and uh, may make some sense to the extent that you could maybe engage some of them, if not all of them, in, uh, in the process. Uh, and, and shall I continue with my thinking, Sherry, for a minute? Yes, yes. I thought you had a really good idea about how to begin to engage people that way um, well, well the the it seems to me that the first recognition that the board needs to do something about governing is when it it's time to hire someone to appoint someone to the board to appoint a new uh, director or governor or whatever their their title may be and in doing so of course uh, uh, it requires, I suppose, a rather uncomfortable process of asking the board who would like to be involved in helping us make this happen, the whole selection process. And uh, what would we want to do? What would we want to avoid? And uh, are we clear about what somebody new would be expected to do? because we have this opportunity to bring in uh, a fresh mind and uh, get it thinking in the way in which we think is right for the board. So that's my first point, is the whole kind of appointment process needs to engage sufficient members of the board for them to begin to, at least in a fairly low-key way, take on the idea that the board has certain responsibilities which no one else has. Mm. So if it's then possible to take that a stage further and say, so if we've now appointed someone who we think is close to what we think is desirable for our board, um, how would we then continue to help that to happen? And it seems to me that the obvious place to start then or to go to is the next stage, which is the induction of the new uh, member of the board. Uh, again, I, I think this presents a number of opportunities. Those who were involved in the appointment may begin to be on the right side of the of the, of the bed covers, so to speak. Uh, but in in, in 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 inducting them onto the board, you it seems to me you would want them to meet with as many members of the board as possible as is practical. Uh, but also to be clear about what the role is and for those members of the board who have not been keen to talk about governing, uh, the question then is, so, so what brief should they have for this conversation with the new director? Is it something about how we do, how we've been doing governing, which is not necessarily terribly helpful? Or is there something about, well, here's some notes that might be helpful that may actually engage them some more in thinking about and talking about uh, their role and the role of the board? Yeah, and in the chat room, John, while you've been yeah. talking, um, I, Linda and Robert are, are saying some things that, that are tie into what you just said. And that is you need to be very explicit. Try, try writing it down so that it's, it's in front of you when you're in, in something then you can reference. Um, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and we would want our 
uh, established members of the board to show themselves as uh, exemplars of good practice. And uh, that, that would also enable a few conversations. I think the chair has to recognise that they're going to be quite busy. They're going to be particularly busy in this. But it does provide, in many ways, a fairly kind of neutral opportunity to get conversation about how do we, how do we govern better? Are we doing the best we can? Do we really understand why we're here? and what all this is for. So um, I would say, yes, Robert, does it become part of the terms of reference and nominating committee? Absolutely, enshrine it as best you can, but this is how we will always go about um, hiring or appointing a new member. And from Linda, the board needs to already be clear about its role and responsibility and what it takes to fulfill that. Um, yes, except that. Um, the board that we were discussing earlier doesn't seem to be clear about its role and responsibility. It thinks it is, so you're in that wonderful state of, um, uh, I'm, I'm, we all understand, don't we? And that kind of denial. Uh, and then Robert saying, so Linda, does that mean that some of the board's governing time is learning more about how to govern? Heresy, that Robert, heresy. Yes. Yes. And Linda, to everyone, usually boards can't clearly articulate that or they relate to some cliche or concept of what their role and responsibility is. And a yes to Robert, that's to the uh, governing board time to learn about stuff. Difficult to argue with. And uh, from Robert, I like it that the board has to write it down. The crafting of words does pr provide clarity. Here, here. And uh, getting several versions of that clarity might be helpful, even though it may be tiresome, because uh, it may be possible then to see who on the board is actually in the rump of where you want to be and whom do you need to spend a lot more time on or suggest they decruit themselves and go elsewhere. Uh, but it is, it is, it's a big job for the chair. There's no way around that. You can't, the chair can't kind of say, oh, well, we'll get my secretary to come and speak with you or the CEO will explain things because that's just surrendering such important stuff to people, to the wrong people, with the greatest respect to those people. Uh, the chief executive is not responsible for how the board governs. Um, neither is the chairman's secretary, if he's lucky enough to have a secretary. So, John, I just want to go back before we wrap up, yeah, yeah. because we just have a minute, but I'd, I'd like yeah. to hear just a bit from you. Where do you think a board gets that false sense of security that, you know, everything is going swimmingly well, everything is just fine, we don't need to change a thing. Where, where does that usually come from? Um, uh, for me, it was the comfort of, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here, so I'll follow <laughs> what everyone else does, and that then becomes your norm as well as their norm. There is no conscious application of any kind of thinking to it other than I'll watch what the others are doing and then I'll do it. Ah. Sad, pathetic, but it's how we survive. It's a right. skill we learn very early in our lives as well. But if we really want to make a change and we really want to make a difference, then they Stop would, doing it. boards, yes, boards would do well to heed the advice that they've heard today. So thanks, John. You're welcome. Thank you. Yep. Shall we reconvene in uh, face, we'll uh, what's it, we'll Fuse? Regroup on Fuse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See ya. All right. See ya.